Hello, church, and welcome to worship on this second Sunday of Advent. After sharing resources between congregations, this service is the first collaboration between Bethlehem Lutheran Church in Ascoff and Hope Lutheran Church in Toivola. Parts of this service were recorded at both locations, and we thank all of those volunteers from both congregations for their hard work in making this possible. Our hope is that by sharing our talents and resources, we can ease the burden on each other while we are unable to worship in person. Before we begin our worship, we have a few announcements. First, we ask for your prayers for the families of Loretta Billman and Robert Kern, who died so tragically this past week in Saginaw. Also, continue to remember our shut-ins and those who are remaining at home during this pandemic. Your calls, notes, and prayers are all appreciated. As this virus continues to rage, all of us are being impacted to some extent, so please continue to pray for healing, comfort, and strength for all of the more direct victims of this plague. This evening at 7 o'clock, we continue our Advent services via Zoom. Please look for the link in your email, and if you have not received an email from me, please call me or email me so I can invite you. And on this coming Tuesday, December 8th at 3.30, I will again be hosting an informal coffee and chat time, again via Zoom. So watch the email for the email invitation, pour a cup of coffee, and join us. The Bethlehem Church Council meets virtually on Wednesday, December 9th at 6 p.m. And the December meal distribution at Bethlehem will again be via grocery cards, and this will happen on Wednesday, December 16th from 3.30 to 5 p.m. With that, let us begin our worship, inviting God into our presence in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Steadfast God, you never abandoned your people when they were at their lowest. Hold your promises before our eyes that they might shine brighter than any darkness which threatens to overcome us. For the sake of your Son, Jesus. Amen. Streaming is from Joel 2, 1 through 17, and 28 through 29. Blow the trumpet, trumpet in Zion. Sound the alarm on my holy mountain. Let all the inhabitants of the land tremble. For the day of the Lord is coming. It is near. A day of darkness and gloom. A day of clouds and thick darkness. Like blackness spread upon the mountains, a great and powerful army comes. Their like, their like has never been from of old, nor will be again after them in ages to come. Fire devours in front of them, and behind them a flame burns. Before them the land is like the Garden of Eden, but after them a desolate wilderness, and nothing escapes them. They have the appearances of horses, and like war horses they charge. As with the rumbling of the chariots, they leap on the tops of the mountains, like the crackling of a flame of fire devouring the stubble, like a powerful army drawn up for battle. Before them, peoples are in anguish. All faces grow pale. Like warriors, they charge. Like soldiers, they scale the wall. Each keeps to its own course. They do not swerve from their paths. They do not jostle one another. Each keeps to its own track. They burst through the weapons and are not halted. They leap upon the city. They run upon the walls. They climb up into the houses. They enter through the windows like a thief. The earthquakes before them, 
The heavens tremble, the sun and the moon are darkened, and the stars withdraw their shining. The Lord utters his voice at the head of his army. How vast is his host! Numbless are those who obey his command. Truly, the day of the Lord is great, terrible indeed. Who can endure it? Yet even now, says the Lord, return to me with all your heart, with fasting, with weeping, and with mourning. Rend your hearts and not your clothing. Return to the Lord, your God, for he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger, and abounding in steadfast love, and relents from punishing. Who knows whether he will not turn and relent and leave a blessing behind him, a grain offering and a drink offering for the Lord, your God. Blow the trumpet, excuse me, blow the trumpet in Zion, sanctify a fast, call a solemn assembly, gather the people, sanctify the congregation, assemble the aged, gather the children, even infants at the breast. Let the bridegroom leave his room and the bride her canopy. Between the vestibule and the altar, let the priests and the ministers of the Lord weep. Let them say, spare your people, O Lord, and do not make your heritage a mockery, a byword among the nations. Why should it be said among the peoples, where is their God? Then afterwards I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams, and your young men shall see visions, even on the male and female slaves. In those days I will pour out my spirit. Here in the reading. The Holy Gospel for this second Sunday of Advent is from the Gospel according to St. Luke. Jesus said, So I say to you, ask, and it will be given you. Search, and you will find. Knock, and the door will be opened for you. For everyone who asks receives, and everyone who searches finds. And for everyone who knocks, the door will be opened. Is there anyone among you who, if your child asks for a fish, will give a snake instead of a fish? Or if the child asks for an egg, will give a scorpion? If you then, who are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will the Heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? This is the Gospel of the Lord. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, the risen Christ. Amen. Most years, when we aren't separated physically, the season of Advent and these weeks leading up to Christmas are a time of homecoming for people and families of all kinds and all ages. The question for us today is, what does homecoming really mean? For many people, such as college students or others who have moved away from home for the first time, the holidays are a time of longing. We long to be back on our own turf. Some of us even long to see snow. I remember very well those first years away from home after graduation from UMD. I couldn't wait to get away and finally be on my own. That first year away, I hadn't accumulated any significant amount of vacation and I couldn't afford to take time off from work without pay. I had spent Thanksgiving alone in Madison, Wisconsin, and there with all my new friends and co-workers around, well, they suddenly seemed to disappear for their own things. I think my dinner that year was a small turkey roast, some instant mashed potatoes, a can of green beans, and a pie from a grocery store. By Christmas time, 
my heart ached for my family and some real snow. I mean, snow that could actually be measured. So I used the two personal days that I had guarded so carefully to create a long weekend that included Christmas. It was good to be home for more than a day and a half at a time. It was great to be able to rejoin the senior choir for the Christmas Eve candlelight service. But since all of my old high school and college friends were also busy with families, being home for the holiday fell short of my expectations. It was good. It was nice. It just wasn't what I was expecting and hoping for that year. If you can relate to that story, you know how the Judeans felt returning home from captivity in Babylon. First, it was a long, hard trip back to the Promised Land. That journey, frankly, made my six-hour drive from Madison look like nothing. Then, when they got home, nothing looked like the homeland they had left. Jerusalem had been reduced to rubble, and the temple was not to be found. The rest of Judea didn't look much better. The homes and villages that were still standing were now occupied by complete strangers. Such was the backdrop for the work of the prophet Joel. The people had returned full of hope, and that hope was completely unrealized. What were the Judeans to do? They had a goal. King Cyrus had given his blessing and even some financing for the rebuilding of the temple and of Jerusalem. The first order of business when the remnant of the nation arrived was worship. They climbed to the top of the Temple Mount and worshiped in the ruins of Solomon's temple. Then the difficult work of rebuilding could begin. You know, as you read through the prophets of the Old Testament, you won't find many prophets who didn't take a very dim view of worship. Most of those prophets saw nothing good in worship since it was usually divorced from the moral life. Joel's view is different. For this prophet, there is value in worship. For Joel, worship can call us to repentance and that call can actually lead to real repentance. The words of the prophet call people to return to the Lord. Those words should be familiar to us. They appear in at least seven other places in the Old Testament. Indeed, they are a major theme around which all of Judea and Judaism worships even today. For many of us, the words are familiar from our Lenten liturgies. Return to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful slow to anger, and abounding in steadfast love. Joel calls the people back to a life of repentance. The threats involved with doing otherwise were pretty scary. The repentance needed was one that would come from the heart or inside, and it should be a lament for having turned away from God in the first place. Repentance should look like mourning the death of a loved one. Like other homecomings, returning to God, like returning to our families, is based on complete trust in who our God is and how our God operates. The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the God of the returning exiles, is the same God who calls each of us back today. The hope we carry in our return is that our God is gracious and merciful. Our God is slow to anger and is abounding in steadfast love. Our God is a God who relents from punishing. You and I live knowing that our God is truly as Joel describes. In fact, our God wanted us back enough to come and live with us and then make the ultimate sacrifice for us. The good news in our reading today is found in the last two verses of the reading from Joel. It is a promise, a promise that Jesus himself repeats. God promises to pull us back into the loving relationship that our created, 
Creator wanted from the very beginning. The gift of the Holy Spirit is poured out on us to make it all possible. Our God promises to live in our hearts forever. The really good news in our reading today is that God's promise is all-inclusive. The promise is for all, sons and daughters, old and young, slave and free. Yes, the promise is even for you and for me. Homecomings aren't always as we expect or hope them to be. This year, homecomings may not be possible at all. But one homecoming will always be as promised, as expected, and as hoped for. Return to the Lord your God. That is a homecoming that is filled with hope. It is a homecoming filled with great expectations. It is a homecoming filled with love. Best of all, it is a homecoming filled with promises that we can trust. Amen.
with the whole church, let us affirm our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray for the church, the world, and all those in need. Our prayer petitions will end with God of hope. Please respond, hear our prayer. In this season of tinsel and twinkling illusions, grant us a deeper joy that endures throughout these days the burning promise of our coming Savior, God of hope, hear our prayer. In the spirit of St. Nicholas, use us to minister to those in need, providing for their lack without seeking recognition or thanks, but only the fulfillment of recognizing our connection with all of your children. God of hope, hear our prayer. The earth is forgiving, even as its creator is, renewing what has been depleted and repairing what has been damaged. Make us partners in the recovery of this planet from the ravages of our abuse and neglect and accept our repentance for all that we have done. God of hope, hear our prayer. When we lose our visions, we are tempted to give in to despair. Rekindle your light within those who have given up and work through us to reach out to the lonely, sad, and discouraged. Send your healing spirit to all those who need it, especially those who suffer because of COVID-19. <coughs> For our shut-ins and others who are living in loneliness and isolation. For those grieving the loss of loved ones. For those who find this holiday season especially difficult for those who are suffering in body, mind, or spirit, and those we now name either silently or aloud. God of hope, hear our prayer. With all your faithful saints, we join our voices with the heavenly chorus, praising the one who delivers and delights our hearts with the promise of eternal life. God of hope, hear our prayer. Our eyes await the fulfillment of all your promises, the answer to all of our prayers through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who teaches us to pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. Let us, within our home groups, share peace with one another. And now let us give thanks for the tithes and offerings received by mail, online, or by other means. Let us pray. <clears throat> you call us to return to you with all our hearts and to give our lives to your service. Accept these offerings of love and use us as your servants to bring your light of mercy to all the world. Amen. Receive the blessing. The creator of the stars, bless your advent waiting. The long-expected Savior, 
fill you with love and the unexpected spirit guide your journey now and forever. Amen. Go in peace. Stay safe. Prepare the way of the Lord. Thanks be to God.